Hi guys, this is Bachelor Throw and we are playing Criminal Case Traveling Time, Case 60, Back to the Future. Let's watch out the tree and now this guard or our army of the new Cairo has set a bounty at us. 2029 is the home we remember. A time machine has been seized, the best be captured and we are fugitives from the Egyptian guards. We are fugitives from the whole city now, Katrina. Our pictures are all over the news. About this we put on our head. Citizens of New Cairo, Ferry of Ptolemy is offering a reward for the capture of these malevolent apostates. These renegades should be considered extremely dangerous. They are to be seized and brought to the authorities. May Ra's light shine upon you. As if these were bad enough, what will we do? Yes, right. We should be seated outside right now. Uh, since we're stuck inside, we might as well search the chief's apartment again. Yeah, just wanted to comment that... Well, not that, that we are wanted, but... The second crime scene that's next to the prison isn't, uh, isn't the prison itself. It's, uh, it's the chief's apartment still. Well, there was no need to go back to the prison and then get captured again because neither the victim nor the killer went there. Alright, so this time it's going to be couches of the apartment. Is the other oh, is the belt cloud potted ah just gonna continue oh I need a potted plant I thought I didn't need it Katria, the old fashioned cell phone must be the chiefs. If you can crack the password, we might learn something about the circumstances surrounding his murder. And the diagrams on this handwritten notes look like the ones in Da Vinci's treatise on time travel. But this chief wasn't working for time, it doesn't even exist here. Let's retrieve the rest of this page to figure out what this means. And if you think it's worth sifting through that flower pot, Katarina, I won't stop you. The chief's cure has looted us long enough. I'd really like to get my hands on them, so let's get to work. Yeah, I really want to catch who... Who were the chief and why. And I hope that's gonna set us on good side with the dynasty where we catch the killer. 258A. Wait. I think we know whose apartment is this. How strange, Katrina. There's a half hard pendant buried in that flower pot. How does it think couples give each other? There's no name, only a number 258A. That's the apartment of the chief's neighbor, Rahema Tamun. She never said anything about being romantically involved with the chief. Let's find out why Miss Tower kept this from us. Maybe she didn't want to tell us. Well, she didn't want to tell anybody and then... I don't know. Okay. Now these documents.
These are quad the theory computations get trida. Is that a vicious conditional probability formula? The little chief was doing research into time travel. I thought that he had a research assistant named Anna Blackheart. Oh. Wait, is that Anna Blackheart that homeless girl we met outside? She claims she knew nothing about Chief Scott, but she actually walked with him. Miss Blackheart needs to explain this. Oh my god. So Chief... Maybe Chief knew we were coming. Alright. Now the phone. You are a lot to cheese Phil, Katrina. Let's get to Kai pronto. Okay. Alright, let's first have a chat with Rehema. Oh, it's you. I thought you were delivering my rocket sphinx. I already used my jeep chief for the same store as my landlord. Why did you tell us about your relationship with Mr. Scott? You clearly didn't want to discuss history and literature. I didn't mean to deceive you, it's just that I never knew where our relationship was at. One minute Chris was acting all gentleman-like, showering me with attention. He went bought with these crocodile skin shoes. Then out of nowhere Chris broke it off. He never even told me why, just a lame excuse that it was from for my own good. I imagine it must have hurt your feelings. Bah, I'll get over it. When someone treats you like that, maybe I am better off without him. Oh, but it could be you. Something tells me that he was killed because of the... Because uh, he was uh, he was obsessed with time traveling. Well, that that is the obs obsession here in this alternate present. Back with the color of your house after all? I could use a can of rocket sphinx right about now. Anna, we know you work with Chris Scott. Why didn't you tell us? That was months ago and it didn't it didn't end well. Why dig up the past? Because our friends were murdered and we need to understand what happened. Mrs. Scott was a funny guy to work with. He'd always be mixing his metaphors. I watched Clock Never Boils was my favorite. But then he started researching particle physics. He was convinced that time travel was possible. These two directors disapproved and warned him to stop, but he ignored them. Eventually they fired him, putting him on a political blacklist. And because I was his assistant, they fired me too. I had a good life and a prospering career. My gym chip account was loaded. Now I sleep in a thousand and it's all Christopher's fault. Oh my. Still think the reason for killing is the same. Let's check out the chief's phone. This phone is another example of the chief covering his tracks, Katarina. It's a burger phone and the text messages only go back a week. So it's likely the chief replaced his phones on a regular basis. Nevertheless, there's something interesting about those messages. We're all ears. Almost every day, the chief sent pickup requests to that taxi driver you spoke to, Lenny Saunders. Each message included GPS coordinates. But the coordinates just correspond to a bunch of empty warehouses. And the final message is an angry reply from Saunders. Stop calling me, Scott. I'm not making any more of your pickups. The chief can't tell us what this means, but Lenny Sanders can. Looks like we'll be calling him again after all. And he did run away from Moss be just when we wanted we, just when we wanted to spo speak to him, so uh, do, do those pickups have to do with why you ran away? You again. I can't waste time talking all day. I got deer house to earn. These crocodile skin shoes aren't cheap. 
You were at his aggravating when you said Mrs. Scarf was a regular customer. He messaged you every day. Well, I... Then there's this last message. What made you so angry? Mrs. Scar had me driving you to some dodgy places. I didn't feel safe. Not to mention the company he kept. Some of the shady characters he'd ride with. You don't want to know. Actually, we do. We must know who these characters are. Well, you won't hear it from me. I'm done talking. I don't wish nothing bad on anybody, but I'm glad Mrs. Scott's off my back once and for all. Oh, he's still not going to tell us anything. And... That gives me... Uh... He used that... He worked with the homeless girl, so... To pick up parts for the time machine, he showed the message we... We sent him in 1969, and he showed it to Emmett, and who else was suspicious? Uh, the neighbor was suspicious, I think she was suspicious about something, and now the shady characters. I think Chief Scott wanted to go and save us, he wanted to build a time traveling machine, because he knew we were coming. He knew that we were sp he, he know. He knows about us. That's what I wanted to say. So he was ready to go build a time machine and go rescue us. So it's no wonder... No wonder we were waiting for so long so that the time can send the help. Because time doesn't exist and... Well, all in all, Chief wanted to save us. We're slowly getting a clearer picture of Chief Scott's life in New Cairo, Katarina. It's pretty complicated. Apparently, research the chief was conducting into time travel ult ultimately got him and his assistant Anna Blanker blacklisted. After he was fired, he isolated his cell, sending off to green with burner phones. The chief abruptly broke up with his girlfriend in order to protect her. While well, his mysterious journeys with shady characters we were enough to freak out Lenny Saunders. He was clearly up to something. The question is, did he get him killed? As much as we should stay out of sight, Katria, we must go outside and hunt for clues. It's the only way we'll find answers. Well, we were on the street when we, when we talked to the taxi driver. And nobody said anything. Well, let's just hope there's no big crowds around, around this part of the city. Because we are we are a bounty target and because because of COVID-19, two meters away. Make some space. And there's nobody around. Seconds, oh dear. So just so the can. That's what we need. Cigarette pack, where's the mask? I see it! Ah! I had them just in my sight. That the can of rockets thinks he stayed with blood, Katarina. We know the kid who drinks that, so they must have discarded this can. Without his lab, Theo can use that saliva around the rim to establish a DNA profile of the killer. Let's take a sample. Well, all he needs is a microscope, so... And that CCTV camera would be an excellent clue if it wasn't broken. He has a perfect view of the chief's apartment entry, which the killer used to flee the building. You think you could repair the damage to this camera, Katrina? Then let's do it. You know pretty well that I can restore even the unrestorable things, like the cameras. Come on, 
Let's get these clues back inside. With our faces all over the news, we are sitting ducks. Yeah. Let's go back. We're in. <laughs> Alright, first we're gonna restore the camera. Oh, I didn't expect it to be this small. You repair that CCTV camera, Katarina. If there's any useful footage of the cure, Kai will be the one to find it. Okay. Okay, now the rocket sphinx. You exist only in alternate present, but in the real present you're supposed to be Rocket Cow. Let's rush the sample of saliva from the curious scan of Rocket Sphinx to 2 t Katarina. Okay. What's on this camera? I try my best to recall footage with the CCTV camera, Katrina. Here I got good news and bad news. Is the bad news that you didn't catch the killer's face? You might as well give us the bad news first. I asked for some footage of the killer as they exited the chief's building. You can see them throwing away that bloodstained globe you found. But the damage to the camera was too severe to make a positive identification. The film is too pixelated. So what's the good news? That's where I come in, Katarina. Although we could identify the culprit, I recognize a distinct shape on the curious clothing. This shape is unmistakable, consistent with the symbol often worn by the ancient Egyptians. The curious is wearing a scarab brooch. Oh yeah, I did notice the scarab brooch on one of our suspects' clothes. Clothes. <laughs> The girl can try to hide behind their lies, Katarina, but their scarab brew should be as plain as day. Okay, now the saliva. It's frustrating, Katarina. The girl left behind a prime sample of saliva on that sub tree can, but I haven't got the suitable equipment to do a tool root DNA analysis. Does that will give you any lead at all, Tio? There are just enough genetic markers to clearly isolate an X and a Y chromosome. And I don't care what timeline you're in, an X and a Y chromosome indicates only one thing. You can be certain the killer is a man. And that man will face our tough justice for killing the chief. And I want to know why was he killed. You've done it, Katria. We got all the proof we need to bring down the cheese killer. Time may not exist in New Cairo, but they'll pay for their crime. One way or another. Okay. You don't have a scarab brush. It's not Lenny. Oh, it was the landlord. Like monitoring uh, the, like monitoring Chief's uh, internet history through modem wasn't enough, and now you have to kill him. Abrax Tiaken, you were the one who killed your tenant, Christopher Scott. You entered his apartment, slashed his throat with an electric knife, and left him to die. You think I committed murder? That's a fascinating theory. We know you did it. We have a witness who saw you run out of the building, throwing away your bloodstained glove. You murdered our friend and we want to know why. Very well, telling you is of no consequence. I did kill your friend. I've been monitoring him for a while now. A real subversive he was, constantly refused to, to toe the line reading forbidden literature. I was surprised when the order came down to eliminate him. 
An order. You got an order? From whom? Have you been living under a rock? From the Ptolemy family, of course. They promised me a handsome reward to kill your friend. Jeez. Mr. Scarfield to grasp that the only path to success and prosperity is unconditional obedience to the regime. And I've seen you on the news, you're wanted criminals. Now I can turn you in and claim a hefty bounty. Nah! Oh dear, you have a weapon. Where are our guns? So let's go. And I'll try anything or I'll... Gotcha. I'm afraid we are not going anywhere. I hope it was you just knocked him unconscious. Nice work, Kai. Now that Tiak is unconscious, let's get him tied up. They will decide what to do next. Okay. Now that Abrax Tiak is locked away in the chief's bathroom, Katrina, let's gather our thoughts. Apparently, Tiakin was ordered to murder the chief by the Ptolemy family because he was seen as a subversive element. But as far as we know, the most subversive thing he did was research time travel. That's what got him on the government's blacklist. The government obviously knows time travel is possible because those guards were waiting to throw us in prison the second we arrived. Which can only lead to one conclusion. The Ptolemy dynasty masterminded the manipulation of the timeline and will crush anyone who stands in their way. If they think murdering the chief and putting a price on our head will stop us, they'd better think again. Maybe this isn't the first time the dynasty has tried to stop us, Katarina. Someone did sabotage our time machine. Could they have been operating under the dynasty's orders? Well, we still haven't found that out. One thing is certain, if we are to repair the damage to the timeline, we need answers. And it won't rest until we find them. And find a bet to rescue her. We got our work cut out for us, Katarina. <clears throat> Let's get to it. I almost bleached. Wait, how's it called? Time is a lie. Well, it is a lie because it's because everything is different. New York is out your Cairo, so it is, time is a lie. All right, we gotta stop here. We gotta continue playing. Time is a lie, number one. So, thank you for watch. Don't leave a like to this video, and I'll see you again. Goodbye.